teeth of a storm, a pilot guides a seven-ton machine with unerring precision. Achieving this tests the body's sensory system to the extreme. Caught on camera by the Coast Guard, two boys face certain death. Just off the Oregon coast, fierce currents have stranded them, and the tide is rising. We were out maybe a quarter, half a mile, something like that, and uh, we swam for like about an hour trying to get to a rock. I was just getting exhausted, and I just thought I was going to die, and I thought I was going to drown. I couldn't believe it. Their only hope is a helicopter. Nine million dollars worth of high technology. But with winds battering the chopper, what matters more to the boys is a mechanism far more complex than any helicopter. Half a million microsensors linked to one of the most sophisticated communication systems on the planet. You'll find it beneath your skin. We're equipped with a forest of amazing devices, including touch receptors, sensitive enough to feel a single beat of a fly's wing. Pilot Matt Gingrich needs all his sensors on full alert to save the boys. We had about 30 knot winds, the, the rocks around us. It's uh, nerve wracking, very nerve wracking. Each square inch of Matt's hands holds 600 touch sensors. Some, near the surface, record the lightest of contacts. Others lie deeper and measure harder sustained pressure. Through a web of nerves, they fire signals to Matt's brain. In fractions of a second, the brain signals motor nerves, triggering precise movement of his hands on the controls. 4,000 nerves direct each hand as he holds the chopper steady above the rocks. At the same time, Matt's other sensors are hammering him with information. He must read data from a dozen instruments and watch the horizon. He must listen to the crew who can see what's going on below. Amid all this, Matt's sensory system must calculate and balance altitude, speed, and position. That means outperforming any computer on Earth. We still don't have a machine that has the breath to be able to do all of those different things and at the same time instantaneously is assessing the outcome of each one of those things. The speed of signals in Matt's nerves is crucial to his actions. Right there, you're doing perfect. It keeps the rescue swimmer from crashing into the rocks. What's surprising is the nerve structure that makes the speed possible. Our nerves are bundles of thin cells, some more than three feet long, carrying electrical signals to and from the brain. As insulation protects electrical wiring, a sleeve of fat surrounds key nerves. And it's this fat layer that keeps signals from interfering with one another, so they can rocket around Matt's nervous system at over 250 miles per hour. Easy back and left, very easy back and left. We don't want to get the swing. You're going left here. With the rescue swimmer dangling close to the rocks, this is the trickiest part of the operation. Matt's nerves work so fast, and his touch is so precise, that he can make tiny adjustments without thinking. He's acting on instinct, depending on sensations working faster than we can think. It's something we all do, every day. It lets us make music, create art, and save lives. Okay, so we're survivor of the aircraft. You're doing good, Mr. Gingrich, you're doing good. They risked their life to save mine, and 
We all got out of there safe, and if it wasn't for them, I probably wouldn't be alive right now. This forest of touch sensors allows us to respond instantly to whatever's happening around us. But they're not evenly distributed beneath our skin. Our hands have a hundred times as many sensors per square inch as the back of our legs. They're placed where we need them most. If size went by sensitivity to touch, our bodies would look something like this. Tongues and lips twice as big. The same with hands, fingers, and feet. Other senses have different patterns. Sensors for heat are most dense in our fingertips, nose, and strangely, our elbows. They play a critical role. 